Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Michael Burke. I'm the Director of Gastrointestinal Endoscopy at Westmead Hospital in Sydney, Australia. I'm talking to you about our recent publication in Gastrointestinal Endoscopy uh, concerning uh, laterally spreading uh, lesions of the second part of the duodenum managed by endoscopic resection. We undertook this study to examine the outcome of this unique cohort after endoscopic resection. Uh, based on the literature and also our own uh, significant experience, we know that endoscopic resection in the duodenum is more hazardous than at other sites in the gastrointestinal tract, and in particular there's a much greater risk of post-procedural bleeding. Uh, in this study, we compare the outcomes of what we describe as giant laterally spreading tumours against conventional adenomas. The giant lesions were those that were 30 millimetre or greater, hemicircumferential or greater, um, and these tend to be uh, of a similar morphology to uh, lesions that you might see in the colon. These, these, les these colonic lesions are so-called laterally spreading tumours of the colon, and as you know, they grow laterally for um, uh, uh, quite a significant distance before they obtain any uh, substantial vertical height and generally they're classified by the Paris morphology system as, as 0-2A meaning that they're, they're minimally elevated above the surface of the mucosa. So we've found a, a similar cohort of lesions referred to our Centre for Endoscopic Resection. We know in the colon that we can remove these lesions very safely on an outpatient basis and uh, the technical success rate uh, exceeds 95% and most of these patients are managed very effectively endoscopically even if the lesion is more than hemicircumferential or two-thirds circumferential. But what about the outcomes in the duodenum? Can we manage them effectively in that location? Uh, hence our study. Uh, what we found was that with approximately 19 or 20 uh, laterally spreading uh, lesions in the duodenum, there was a greatly increased risk of post-procedural complications. So although we were able to uh, technically and effectively resect these lesions, the risk of serious complications after the uh, procedure was around 30%, 30 to 40%. And this was mostly post-procedural bleeding. Uh, and, and the difference between the conventional lesions, of which were less than 30 millimetre, of which we had about 30, uh, was highly significant. Um, the bleeding can be severe and catastrophic. And <clears throat> this tends to occur after the patient's been discharged from hospital. They, they go home, they're initially quite well, and then within the next 24 to 48 hours, 90% of it occurs in the first uh, two days. Um, they present with, uh, with bleeding, usually melina, but sometimes hematemesis and frank hematochesia. Um, they often have a transfusion requirement, they may, may be hypotensive. And then you might ask, uh, what should be the approach once this happens? And logically, it seems that we should intervene endoscopically. But unfortunately, in contrast to other sites in the gastrointestinal tract, we don't have effective endoscopic tools for the duodenum. And this is because access is difficult, but also the thin wall of the duodenum uh, means that uh, there's a risk of transmural injury with thermal techniques. Um, and also clipping uh, because the, the second part of the duodenum is retroduodenal and retroperitoneal and largely fixed. Um, you can actually tear the muscle layer rather than bring it together. Um, so these are all the technical problems that we have with endoscopic resection in the duodenum. And this area clearly requires uh, further innovation uh, to uh, develop both uh, a means of endos endoscopic means of prophylaxis of bleeding but also uh, techniques to allow immediate intervention, effective and safe techniques that allow immediate intervention after, um, after endoscopic resection. Um, so to summarise, uh, in this uh, a cohort of 50-odd uh, patients, uh, about uh, 20 of whom, 18 or 20 of whom had uh, laterally spreading lesions, uh, there was a greatly increased risk of post-procedural complications, particularly um, severe bleeding, uh, which in one or two cases required surgery. We don't have effective uh, endoscopic hemostasis. Although the tools are available, they're somewhat dangerous. There's a risk of transmural injury and, uh, and further research is required in this area. Thank you.